स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया that 
we publish a manifesto. Hence, we have futurist manifesto. But we do not have a cubist manifesto. We do not have a fauvist manifesto because fauvism, cubism, or for that matter, impressionism, post impressionism, they were not organized movements. They were art movements which happened or evolved over a time. But in case of futurism, it was an organized art movement like Dadaism later on, something that we will look at today itself. And both futurism and Dadaism had their manifestos where they clearly stated their ideas, objectives, and discussed their conceptual framework. So in their manifesto, futurists clearly and openly stated that they are in favor of the technological advances, they are in favor of the new age character where speed, movement, wishes, and including war have become the salient features. And as a result, what you see in their paintings, apart from movements of motorcycles or movements of birds later on, you also see a painting which addresses the subject of armored train in action. Because they were so much in love with action, movement, and speed that they did not have any hesitation to come in favor of war. They in fact supported war because war, according to them, was a result of this technological advancement. War entails speed, action, movement, and hence it was justified. So at a glance, if you look at the main characteristic features of futurism, these are the points that you get. First, international art movement. So futurism was an international art movement, though it was uh, started in Italy in 1909, but soon it became an international art movement. Unlike most of the other art movements, futurism came out of the heart of Italy, whereas Cubism was based in Paris, France. Both Impressionism and post Impressionism movements were also based in France, Paris. Realism as well. Even Romanticism, to some extent, France, and to some extent, England. But Futurism came out of the heart of Italy. Futuristic art bases itself on two main themes the mission and the motion that is movement. Very close to the world of advertising, almost like a business, because they celebrated the idea of speed, movement, motion, mission, and everything that enters this new technological and social atmosphere. Futuristic paintings may look like a mix of a proboscopic and high-speed photograph in one painting, which is true. Because in photographs, we have seen that this was being addressed to capture the speed with a repetition of the same figure, move across the uh, surface. It is almost a similar method that the futurist painters were following in their paintings. And it's true that futurist paintings were refreshing to many because it was a great contrast to the sentimentalism of romanticism. The movement was born out of the corrupt and confused Italian government. It's, there was a reaction, a political reaction involved in futurism also. And for this reason, futurism introduced the use of the manifesto or declaration as a public means to advertise its artistic philosophy and also as a polemic weapon against the academic and conservative world. Because you see, they had to fight not only through their artworks, but they also had to fight through their ideology. They had to, uh, they were compelled to articulate their ideas in words. And that is why the manifesto, and that is why a polemic or a debate was started. And as far as the futurism art style is concerned, you can see the dynamic, the dynamic quality 
happens to be one of the essential features of nutrition. Hence, they have to study in detail the notion of motion, which is again connected with the notion of progress. So there was a great emphasis upon the intuition and its power to synthesize the manifold experiences of sense and memory in a coherent simultaneity. Like Cubist paintings, here in Cubist paintings also you can see simultaneous uh, elements existing simultaneously from various viewpoints. Or maybe from the same viewpoints, you can almost trace a movement of an object or a figure across the path of the painted surface. So simultaneously becomes uh, imperative for most of the uh, futurist paintings. Now, futurism did not want to define any cohesive visual style, but many works in futurism contain in common hard geometric lines and planes that to a resemblance to the cubist style. Now, they of course uh, wanted to do away with the static art. There is hardly anything that is static in cubist painting. Or sculpture, whereas I mean, futurist painting and sculpture. Sorry, whereas in cubist painting and sculpture, usually the subject matter would be static, and the cubist artists would play with the representations. In contrast, futurist artists would always address an object or a figure in motion, because they sought to represent speed and motion in painting. I mean, look at this image of the hand of a violinist. And you all know how the hand of a violinist keeps moving all the time, and Giacomo Bala is trying to capture that movement precisely. And in order to capture, he is applying certain methods of painting like repetition, simultaneity, even fragmentation as a part of his visual vocabulary. By the same artist, Giacomo Bala, swift parts of movements and dynamic sequences, whose movements probably birds, because when you look at the painting carefully, you can see small little images of birds sweeping across the space. Even to ask the identity of the bird depicted here will be a stupid thing to ask. Actually, the, the intention uh, of this painting has got nothing to do with the depiction of bar uh, because the main concern is uh, about the speed and movement of the bird. For example, cheap noise motorcycles. If these three issues are to be addressed in a painting, how does one go about it? So this is the result. This is how Giacomo Bala solved this problem of addressing sheep, noise, and motorcyclists in a painting, a painting that looks completely unrecognizable or non representational and hence abstract. So, like Cubism, the Futurism too gave birth to or generated the ideas of abstraction. Look at these two paintings by Giacomo Bala and Severini respectively. The one on the left by Giacomo Bala is still recognizable because you can see the dog and the woman on the leash, uh, though the dog might be having several legs and limbs, so is the woman, but we know that that will again be a representational mistake from our point of view if we count the number of legs of the dog or the woman. We need not count that. What we need to respond to is how a certain movement and speed has been evoked by repeating the legs. Similarly, if we try to identify the C dancer in this painting by severity, we will be completely confused and disappointed. What we see here is neither the dancer nor the C, but a visual effect of a certain kind of movement. Gino Severini, like Giacomo Bala, 
was also trying to address various kinds of movements in his paintings, like this one, a red cross train passing a village. As you can see, there are certain elements of village and also smoke and the train, but the emphasis is obviously on the movement, the motion of the train rather than anything else. Another important artist belonging to this movement was Umbato Otsio. For example, in order to capture the movement of a certain situation, he paints this painting titled as Riot in the Galleria. So there was a riot, there was a movement, a commotion, a certain kind of conflict, some violence. You hardly find any detail in this painting. In fact, that is not expected, I say. We are not expected to look for the details. What we are expected to feel and respond to is considering the movement. Umbato Gozioni, one more painting called The City Rises. Again, it's all about motion, movement, speed, and the dynamic quality of the subject matter that these artists are trying to address and handle. When Umbato Bocciri does a sculpture like this called Unique Forms of Continuity in Space, first of all, look at the title. The title itself is very unconventional in the sense that uh, when you look at the sculptures by Rota, uh, whom we shall be studying on the third week, you will see that despite the fact that Rota's sculptures are also philosophically driven, but at least he titles the sculptures with a specific subject, using the name of the figure of the person or a mood or a condition. But what about this title? The title itself is pretty abstract because it says unique forms of continuity in space. And what you see in the sculpture is, of course, it looks like a fairly close, I mean, resembles a figure, a human figure. But uh, the resemblance or the reference to a real human figure stops there. Then we are not supposed to look for any more realistic or representation elements of a human figure in this culture. What we are then supposed to do is to once again appreciate the way Bozioni has tried to capture the a sense of motion or a movement in this culture by applying certain distortion of the figure, certain extension of the body parts, and also by making the anatomical um, elements or features of the body disappear completely to allow the effect of speed and motion take over the anatomy. Even in the painting where you can almost recognize the presence of a face, the subject is neither the man or the face, but dynamism of a man's head when that head is actually moving. So he is not interested in the object, but he is interested to capture the movement of an object. And this is what makes this painting so different. So in February 1909, the poet and editor F. E. Marinetti announced the movement Futurism in a manifesto published in the Paris newspaper, Le Picaro, Marinetti insisted that artists turn their backs on the past art and procedures and focus on the present and the future, the vital, noisy life of the industrial city. So, the futurist artists were supposed to celebrate industrialization, they are supposed to celebrate the philosophy, they are supposed to celebrate speed, motion, movement, nation and as I said, even war. The group of painters and poets gathered around Marinetti to work out the implications of futurism for the visual arts. And the group published manifestos of futurist painters in February 1910, and the more specific futurist painting, Technical Manifesto, in March 1910. Not exactly quite similar in terms of the content, but similar in spirit was another movement that appeared around that time in Zurich 
is known as Dada, Dada movement. Around 1919, a little earlier, 1916. The Dadaists or Dada artists did not actually celebrate machine or movement or dynamism or even war, but they were definitely celebrating an idea which would be powerful enough to oppose and challenge anything that is classical, traditional, or normative in terms of its expectation and visual perception. So Dada was primarily an artistic and literary movement that began in 1916 in Zurich, Switzerland. It arose as a reaction to World War I and the nationalism and rationalism which many thought had brought war about. Influenced by ideas and innovation from several early avant-garde cubisms like futurism and constructivism and expressionism, its output was widely diverse, ranging from performance art to poetry, photography, sculpture, painting, and collage. Dada's aesthetic marked by its mockery of materialistic and activistic attitudes proved a powerful influence on artists in many cities, including Berlin, Hanover, Paris, New York, and Cologne, all of which generated their own growth. The movement is believed to have dissipated with the arrival of the surrealist influence around 1924. So, in that sense, surrealism can be understood as a continuation of Dada. Yet, as a movement, and looking at the conceptual framework of Dadaist ideology, it was certainly not the same as that of surrealism. Because Dada was born out of a pool of avant-garde painters, and the movement came into being at the Cabaret Voltaire in Zurich in February. It was a very nihilistic kind of movement. It went against anything. The whole idea of Dada movement was to oppose all the norms of bourgeois culture that the group was barely in favor of itself. In fact, they often say Dada is anti-Dada. Dada is anti-art. Dada is anti-life. Dada is anti-anything, including anti-Dada. Dada art varies so widely that it is hard to speak of a coherent style. So Dada movement never uh, looked forward to creating a coherent stylistic framework. It was basically an avant-garde or a radical idea-based movement where the artists and poets worked and produced um, artworks and poems with uh, different styles and often with uh, different subject matters. But it was powerfully influenced by futurist and expressionist concerns with technological advancement. Yet artists like Hans Art also introduced a preoccupation with terms and other painterly conventions. Marcel Duchamp was a very important artist from this movement who made some curious works and in order to explain this works, one actually needs to look at his own explanations because sometimes the works are provocative and the whole intention was to provoke the viewers to desperately look for meaning but it is quite possible that the works will elude the results of meaning. So, Dadaist artists uh, often were playing uh, with the notion of meaning and often teasing the viewers with uh, provoking uh, them to look for meaning, but actually without having any meaning at all in the works of art. As the Dadaists themselves say, the Dada, as for it, it smells of nothing. It is nothing, nothing, nothing. So there is an element of nihilism involved in Dadaist art. And along with Duchamp, there was also Francis Picabia, 
also use machines as symbols of human relationship, eroticism, and sexuality. Marcel Duchamp also began to use found objects like the cycle wheel, which he placed on a kitchen tool, and he also invited the viewers to touch the cycle wheel and rotate. So basically, he was enjoying the contrast between a static tool and a moving cycle wheel. So the idea was to challenge the accepted notions of art. Hence, Dushram selected the mass produced of the functional objects from everyday life for his artworks, which he called regulates. He did this to shift viewers' engagement with a work of art to what he called the regular, there to please the eye, to the intellectual, in the service of the mind. And by doing so, Dushram subverted the traditional notion of that beauty is a defining characteristic of art. And this has already been challenged by the Cubist artists. It has already been challenged by the Futurist artists. It's been challenged again by the Dadaist artists. That beauty is no more a defining characteristic feature of art. It is something else. Maybe something spiritual, something intellectual, something more conceptual, something that is more idea based rather than the visual beauty. The first and now lost ready made object was made in 1913, almost 40 years earlier, because the materials Duchamp selected to be ready made were mass produced, and he did not consider any ready made art to be original. So this is also very interesting. I don't think anybody before Duchamp could even imagine more than 100 years from today that an artwork could be replicated, repeated again and again, and uh, the idea of original could be challenged. Because he was using ready-made objects, he did not fashion it with his own hands. For example, as far as the bicycle wheel was concerned, he did say that in 1930, I had the happy idea to fasten a bicycle wheel to a kitchen stool and watch it turn. Bicycle wheel is a kinetic sculpture that depends on motion for effect. All the different selected items for his regiments, without regard to the so-called beauty, he said to see that wheel turning was very soothing, very comforting. I enjoy looking at it, just as I enjoy looking at the flames dancing in the fireplace. By encouraging viewers to spin the bicycle wheel, Dushman challenged the common expectation that works of art could not be taught. So, from various points of view, these Dadaist artists or futurist artists kept on challenging the idea of art, the idea of looking at art, the notion of what is art, and probably one of the most outrageous and challenging artwork that was ever made uh, during that time of uh, history was this work, uh, once again, another ready made uh, artwork by Master Dushan, which is nothing but a person you generally to get upside down and he also signed on the rim of the urinal and he kept it and displayed it in an exhibition giving it a title called Fountain in 1970 this was made and obviously the entire art circle the art society got out of it it was out of it yes. that how could you do that now obviously uh, Dushan did not uh, want uh, people to uh, look at that work as uh, uh, an art, but what he really wanted to do was to provoke the viewers and instigate the habit of questioning the challenges. And another work by another different artist called Man Ray also plays with the negative ways like an iron and nails uh, attached on the surface of the iron, thus making uh, or bringing the functionality of the object in question, and also creating some kind of scary feeling as well. 
So the other reason, because it was also, uh, the, the movement also had poets along with uh, painters. So Dada is created some strange and uh, most uh, ridiculous and funny ways of writing a poetry. They created poetry without changing the words like how. So with all kinds of outrageous things, including this retake on Mulali Sabai, Marshall Dushan, where he puts a mustache on the face of Mulali Sa and uh, on, on, on the poster image of uh, Mulali Sa and thereby challenging uh, the classical art and also ridiculing the classical art and introducing an element of irreverence, an element of mockery. And that is how they also used to exhibit their works of art. And this is a photograph from the first international Dada art fair that happened in Berlin in 1922. You can see that how crazy the exhibition might have looked, how crazy the exhibits might have looked, and uh, what kind of outrage these movements must have produced at that point. Thank you.